As we've been learning, proteins are the most diverse of the macromolecules and have an incredible variety of three-dimensional shapes and structures. There is a strong relationship between a protein's structure and its function inside a cell. A protein's distinctive shape allows it to interact with other molecules in order to carry out a specific function. Proteins display four levels of structural organization, primary or first order, secondary or second order, tertiary is third order, and quaternary is fourth order. The primary structure is the unique linear sequence of amino acids bonded together by covalent bonds to form the polypeptide chain. In this example, there are a total of 40 amino acids bonded together to form the polypeptide. The specific sequence of amino acids in the protein is determined by the genetic code in DNA. Any errors or mutations in the DNA sequence can result in changes to the protein's amino acid sequence, which may alter the protein's overall shape and function. An example of this is sickle cell disease, a genetic disease in which deformed hemoglobin proteins twist and curve red blood cells into a sickle or crescent shape. This greatly limits the ability of red blood cells to transport oxygen and move through microscopic blood capillaries. The secondary structure of a protein is where neighboring amino acids in the polypeptide chain repeatedly twist or fold, resulting in two kinds of shapes, an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. An alpha helix is a spiral shape that is twisted clockwise. This strong coiled shape is held together by hydrogen bonds, indicated by the red boxes in the illustration. These give the protein extra stability. A beta pleated sheet resembles a folded chain linked fence. In this secondary structure, the individual protein chains are folded and joined together by hydrogen bonds shown by the red broken lines, to form a tough sheet. The tertiary, or third order, structure of a protein is the overall folding pattern of the polypeptide chain that produces the protein's unique three-dimensional shape. The protein's specific tertiary folding pattern is what determines how it'll function in the cell. The type of folding pattern found in tertiary proteins is more extensive than in secondary proteins. This more intricate folding brings amino acids that are located far away from each other on the polypeptide closer together. Because tertiary proteins are very large molecules, they need additional chemical bonds to hold them together and maintain their specific shapes. Disulfide bridges are very strong covalent bonds between two sulfhydryl groups located on the amino acid cysteine. Weaker bonds such as hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and hydrophobic interactions also help maintain the protein's tertiary structure. The final and most complex protein structure is the quaternary, or fourth order. Quaternary proteins are very large in size and consist of two or more polypeptide chains. The one shown here is made up of four different polypeptides. Two proteins that we previously learned about have a quaternary structure. The structural protein collagen, composed of three polypeptide chains, and the transport protein hemoglobin, consisting of four polypeptide chains. In addition to these four levels of structural organization, we can also classify proteins into two broad categories based upon their overall shape, fibrous proteins 
and globular proteins. Fibrous proteins form long parallel chains of polypeptides that are insoluble in water and often have a structural role in the body. Examples include collagen, which we've just seen, which gives strength to bones, ligaments, and tendons, actin and myosin, which function in muscle contraction, cell division, and cellular transport, elastin, which allows blood vessels and skin to stretch and return to their original shape, fibrin, used in blood clotting, and keratin, which waterproofs the skin and forms the structure of hair and nails. Globular proteins have a rounder, more spherical shape and are usually soluble in water. Many globular proteins function as part of the body's metabolism. Examples include hemoglobin, which transports oxygen, albumins, which help regulate blood pH, antibodies that defend the body against foreign substances and microbes, enzymes, which act as chemical catalysts, some hormones, like insulin, which helps balance blood glucose level, and lipoproteins, which transport lipids through the blood. Much of the body's homeostasis maintains an environment favorable to proteins, allowing them to keep their specific three-dimensional shape. If conditions in the protein's cellular environment change, such as changes in temperature or pH, the protein shape may become altered in a process called denaturation. Proteins that are denatured cannot function because of the changes in their specific structural organization. Although some proteins can undergo renaturation and return back to their original shape, Denaturation is usually a permanent shape change. This is similar to frying an egg or cooking a steak. Once a protein is denatured or cooked, like the protein albumin in egg whites, it cannot be uncooked.